Seven-year-old Henry was by no means a class act. <laughs> and if you bore the burden of knowing me back then, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> but regardless of how bad a kid I once was, something about the good old Christmas spirit caused me to be decent in the days leading up to the holidays. After a year of mischievous acts, I would always dedicate a couple days in December to kindness and reflection. <laughs> For example, in class I once refrained from spilling Elmer's glue on a friend's paper snowflake, and I would always pray to Santa. Did I do this out of generosity of spirit? Probably not. These saintly acts were purely out of fear. The fear of receiving coal in my stomach. The line, he knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake, scared the hell out of me. I mean, if Santa had been keeping tabs on me year round, there's no way I would get so much as a pair of socks on Christmas morning. So, in an effort to realize my hopes and dreams, I would counteract my nasty dreams with minutes to spare, and guess what? Santa always came through. <laughs> Big time. Big time. As time progressed, and as the idea that Santa was not real took hold of my peers, I faced a crisis of faith. In the fifth grade, cynicism replaced the holiday spirit, and all Santa believers were shamed. Due to the trendiness of anti sandaism I began to conform to the ideology as well, but only on the outside. I would tell my friends, I don't believe in Santa, but in truth, I would lay in bed late at night, teary eyed, looking towards the North Pole, waiting for the Saint Nick to slide down my chimney or the Christmas tree. For me, for me, for me, no Santa meant no Christmas, and no Christmas meant no presents. God forbid. Santa embodied the splendor of Christmas morning. He's everybody's holiday hero, you know, the guy that gives you what you want most of the time. Each year, I assumed Santa's gifts would bring happiness and fulfillment, but time and time again, my expectations for Christmas morning far exceeded reality. With each gift I ripped open, I would always be filled with momentary joy, but as soon as the thrill wore down, I was always left feeling a little bit empty. I think back to the third grade. My family members were enjoying each other's company in the dining room while I was in the living room crying. At the time, I did not understand the reason for my tears. I remember feeling baffled by the utter joy and generosity of my family. I did not comprehend how they could be so happy when the supply of gifts under the tree had been fully depleted. <laughs> no more gifts to rip open, but no more excitement, yet my family members achieved joy despite the lack of presence. As tears streamed down my face, I began to realize the flaw in my approach to the holidays. And I looked to my old friend Santa for guidance. Santa is world renowned for his jolly attitude, and all he does is give to others. He gives time, money, and labor to satisfy the hopes and dreams of children. He makes no profit, receives happy cookies in return, but I bet he receives emotion. A fulfilling emotion that transcends all forms of that emptiness. So, in order to avoid the emptiness I felt on Christmas evening, I would need to make a drastic change. Maybe my family members in Santa Claus achieve joy through generosity. This concept was hard for me to grasp. How could someone be happy when giving was their main focus during the holiday season? And how could I give to my family members in order to achieve the same contentment? As an unemployed third grader, I didn't exactly have the capital to buy gifts, but giving does not necessarily need to come in the form of something tangible. After all, my family members dedicate countless hours to serve my needs. My dear mother gave a large portion of her time driving me to and from soccer practice, cooking meals, and comforting me when I felt sad. My dear father dedicated time to throwing the football, playing the guitar, reading me stories before I went to bed, and even giving up a sacred spot in the master bedroom when the dark was a little bit too much for me to handle. <laughs> These examples don't require money, 
their gifts of the heart. Needless to say, I shifted my approach to the holidays just a tad. During the holiday season, it is easy to become self-centered. After all, it is a rare window to break from the demands of daily life. As tempting as it will be to solely pursue my own desires during the holidays, I will find the greatest release by catering to my family. Even though the all-knowing Santa will be keeping me in line this year, I look forward to helping my grandmother around the house, even though I might regret saying that later. I look forward to hugging my sister for the first time in a long while, even though she may not return the embrace. And I look forward to enjoying the chaos of my family during the holiday season, because I know the smiles of my loved ones always provide a fuzzy feeling, a feeling far better than any gift Santa could deliver.